Hey, everybody. I, I hope you can hear me. Um, this is my first time doing a live stream. And I would very much like to pre-apologize uh, for a number of things. One, my uh, technical prowess during this will be um, bad. Uh, I've never done this. And believe it or not, I am something of a Luddite. Okay, you can hear me. Great. Thank you, Lucien. Uh, two, if I appear um, uncomfortable, uh, it's because I um, I am. I uh, I am not uh, terribly comfortable with being the face of something. Um, and I find um, my face distracting when I'm doing tapings and that sort of thing. So um, I have, you know, I, I made a conscious decision a long time ago to let the toys speak for themselves and be kind of the voice of it. But I just found it a lot easier to just be kind of in the, um, in the background, so to speak. So yeah, I am, uh, this is way out of my comfort zone. And, uh, if I've learned anything from being, hi guys. Um, if I've learned anything from being, uh, in the last couple of years is jump out of your comfort zone. And, um, <sighs> well, here we are. <laughs> um, and you know, so I, I thought this would be a great occasion to, uh, let you guys know what's going on with the channel and the magazine and uh, a bunch of other stuff. And then, you know, uh, chit chat with you guys. And if there's time, I would open a box that I got months ago that I forgot about. So um, really appreciate everyone showing up. Hey, David. David Lockwood, by the way, is the guy who co-authors five awesome things on eBay every week. David sends me just magical things like uh, this week. He sent me that Hong Kong Fui candle and that mirror, that amazing, I'm not even a Battlestar Galactica fan or a Frazetta fan. And um, I love that mirror. I wanted that mirror. I, you know, I have no reason to own it, but um Thanks. So that that's who David is. And David is actually uh, authoring uh, an article in issue four and five of uh, Toy Ventures. So, um, oh, this is really great. I'm really appreciative of all the people showing up. This is amazing. I, I was thinking I was going to be talking to 10 people and I was totally cool with that. Um, so what's going on with the magazine is issue four has a distributor. Uh, I have signed a um, deal with Diamond Select or Diamond Comic Distributors. Uh, perhaps you've heard of them. And I've been getting a lot of people saying, you know, well, what do I buy them from my comic store or do I buy it from you? And, um, you know, uh, the way the business, um, thank you very much, Gojitron. That's really nice. Um, the way the business is set up is, you know, we're very dependent on sales through the website. Um, and yeah, that's, this is my face. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> and um, we need diamond for another reason. So what we're doing is we're still like, yes, absolutely. You know, support your local comic shop. Uh, tell people about it. The, the reason we're doing diamond is so that a store in the UK can order one copy of toy ventures where they would never buy it from us. So we need those numbers. And, um, but we are still going to be offering uh, incentive premiums through uh, the, 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 the toy venture store that we can't offer. Um, we can't offer through the, um, the, the, the diamond. We just can't afford it. We're, we're it was a small company. So, um, Yes, absolutely. You know, do whatever you want to do. If you want to order it through your comic store, great. If you just, you know, if you just want to help, tell your comic store about it. Um, it's it's amazing, and um, you know, that's that's the beauty of going through someone like Diamond. Somebody can just buy one issue and put it out there and see what's going on. But you know, if you buy from us, we'll be totally happy. And I uh, will be revealing. Um, yeah, Toy Ventures store is better than Amazon as well. Um, I was able for the the second issue to include the 
the gum cards with the Amazon order because I printed um, 2,000. Like, you know, I, I printed enough gum cards that we could cover every issue. With the iron-on, I couldn't do that through Amazon because, you know, we did that in a factory in China and it was very expensive and our budget wouldn't allow it. So, um, you know, we're, that's the, the, the joy of ordering through us is we're including that serial premium, so to speak. And um, I'm very happy to say that we're going to continue doing that. And um, if you guys are a fan of my podcast at all, my partner, Jason Lindsay, he's a genius. And, you know, him and I had a long conversation last week and he came up with like five different ideas for weird stuff we want to do. You know, I want to do Presto Magic's rub down transfers. I want to do um, all kinds of, uh, you know, different weird stuff we would get in the box of a cereal premium. And, um, you know, that's half the fun of this. Um, you know, it, it's, it's getting this out there is really important to me, but also, um, having this kind of fun. Um, yeah, there's a podcast, Keith. <laughs> in fact, I got to tape one tomorrow with Jason. Um, so, uh, I, you know what? Let, let's do this. Um, I'm going to reveal the uh, cover of issue four right now, which is actually in the diamond catalog. But, you know, let's show it. And uh, I apologize again for the low rent SCTV version of this. This is my house, by the way. But uh, we are going with a Munsters cover uh, this issue. That is photography by Corey Lachat. And Corey has done um, a photo retrospective on what could only be one of the greatest Munsters collections in the world. Um, unfortunately, the gentleman who owned it passed away. And Corey was um, able to curate it. He knew the guy. And, uh, you know, he's working with his widow. And some of the stuff in this monsters collection is never been seen before. Um, never been seen in print. You know, this guy owned insane stuff and um, we're going to dedicate the issue to him, obviously. But uh, yeah, that was, you know, so there's actually two monster articles in issue four um, because I'm also working on a guide to the Migo mad monsters which um i've worked with marty abrams on and of course you know i opened up to the migo community and uh yeah the bob burns and monsters for sure and um this is going to be a definitive guide to the mad monsters i always wanted to do um who got his collection it, it's still being sold it's still being like rifled through um, the world, I guess. Um, and the Mad Monsters article, I've always wanted to catalog these Mego lines, you know. Um, and, you know, if you've, if you've looked at issues uh, two and three, you'll see I did, you know, we did Doctor Who and we did Space 1999. Now we're going to do the Mad Monsters. And Marty Abrams was amazingly generous with his time. He and I and Paul Clark sat down for a Saturday morning. It was so much fun. And um, the next thing we're going to hit in issue five is we're going to start on Planet of the Apes. There's no way I can do Planet of the Apes in one. So it's going to be several chapters over the next year for Planet of the Apes. But we have um, some wonderful stories from Marty. And then, you know, I'm working with the top ape collectors that I know. I mean, there's, a, you know, there's a couple of good guys and, and that's the beauty of a lot of this is, you know, whether it's, uh, it's, it's the Lincoln monsters or the AHI, I've had this wonderful generosity and support to get all the information. There's nobody who is kind of withheld stuff, which is amazing. You know, you really want people to share, uh, and communicate everything that they have and it's beautiful. It, it really is. And it, it's really um, made me feel kind of positive about it, uh, like just collecting in general. When a group of individuals go, oh, no, you know, let's build the barn. Let's do this article and let's share everything and let's change 
um, nomenclature, which is which is beautiful. One one of my favorite things that has happened since we started Toy Ventures is I've been sitting in groups and people have said things like, um, uh, "Hey, I'm looking for a thin waist creature," and the the nomenclature before was people would say the female AHI creature or the male AHI creature, which is, you know, weird. Um, but it, you know, it predates back to like the eighties and everyone I talked to in the group, Andrew, Ray, uh, Shannon, uh, they all kind of said like, nobody likes it. it. It's not accurate. There is no girl creature. And we, you know, we came up with thin waist, wide waist and to hear it being used, to hear it being adapted is validating it's, it's incredibly validating because you realize like people are actually reading this and, and they're looking at it and um to try and make sense of these lines and figure out what happened and and where is um well it's something i've always wanted to do and uh i'm you know i i wish i had done it 10 years ago but with technology that it is now um it's it's wonderful because I can take iPhone photos and use them for publications. And I don't think that existed 10 years ago. So that's wonderful. Um, so we've got the Munsters, the Mad Monsters. We have three other, um, four other articles in the issue. It's a very knockoff um, orientated issue. Uh, we have, um, we're going to have a Planet of the Apes knockoff article. We're going to have one about Italian super friends, which um, is something I've been working on with my friend Vinny Sarabone. Uh, these weird, you know, uh, Migo knockoffs. We have a piece, and this one I'm really proud of, the Durham um, Dime Store figures, these little push-button action figures. I actually don't own a single one of them, but you know, through the help of folks like David and and uh, and uh, Michael Grifka. We have a full set of these things, and I didn't even know there were so many of these figures. And I love to catalog and and, uh, and and put these out there. And I also love laying out the images. It's, it's layouts are very zen for me, and I enjoy it. And uh, David Lockwood has written a beautiful article on um, fun stuff. Did a line of stretch toys. Excuse me. Um, they're, you know, they're highly imitative of um, Stretch Monster and Stretch Armstrong. They're called Septor and Garth. And I find like Septor, Septor is sort of like um, a combination between Darth Vader and Rom Space Knight. And um, well, Garth is Garth. But, uh, you know, these are the kind of things we wanted to shine the light on. Um in terms of uh, obscure toys, I, you know, um, uh, how do I put this? Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember Al, yeah, Action Jackson, yeah, he, uh, and then actually one of those Action Jackson ads from Italy is in issue four with the Mad Monsters where he's on the lap table. Like, there's just no way um, that you couldn't show that. Um, where was I going? Oh, um, one of the things about Toy Ventures that I wanted to kind of say, because I was thinking about this all day, is um, rather than talk about He-Man, I'd like to talk about, because there's like a 500-page book about He-Man that just came out that looks amazing. Uh, I would rather talk about Remco Warrior Beasts. And rather than G.I. Joe Real American Hero, because there's some great books on that, I would rather talk about like Remco Sergeant Rock. Um, and so that's kind of where we want to go. We want to kind of shine a light on lines that don't get the attention or love that others do. And actually, we know some you know, Magnum PI rack toys. Um, we, we've got some former Remco people we're talking to. Um, I've got Marty Abrams, uh, you know, who's, who's just a wealth of information. Um, and I know some former Amigo people and we're kind of just, you know, and, and I'm always looking for contributions. Like if somebody, if you collect a line that you're really interested in talking about, let's, let's discuss a future issue down the road. 
Um, I like the variety and um, I am very much, um, I'm very much into what I'm into, but um, I do want to expand it into other arenas that I'm, I don't collect, you know, um, the, the, the best example is uh, about three of the articles in this issue. I don't own a single toy from, and that's, the beauty of it, you know, um, it's, it's shining a light on people's obsessions and hopefully, you know, finding, uh, giving some answers and finding some like-minded people as well. So, um, yeah, I, major Matt Mason, I don't, oh, Jerry Anderson, of course, there will be, um, a lot of Jerry Anderson, as you can see behind me, I have a little wall of UFO items back there. Um, and we'll definitely be doing a lot more about Jerry Anderson, Mark's Archie. Yes, absolutely. Mark's Archie. I, I yeah, no, that, that's, that's where we want to go. Yeah, it's getting me dry. Um, every issue makes my eBay shopping flex. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I'm glad to hear it. That that's that's awesome, actually. Um, so, without further ado, because I'm very proud of it, uh, I would like to reveal the premium for pre-ordering issue four. Now, you can't um, pre-order um, issue four right now because um, we're not done. But it'll be probably the first week of June that we'll open up the gates, and um, but. The item arrived from the factory way early, and um, this is absolutely one of my favorite ideas that came to me on a Sunday morning. I was trying to figure it out. Um, I have a bunch of these on the wall, the door to my office, and that's when it kind of like the, the idea formed. The next day, an artist reached out to me who I can't um, divulge his name. He, he's not 100% sure he wants to be uh, named in this. And I, it's a shame. I, I hope I can you know, coerce him into doing that. Who said, hey, you, do you want anything drawn for your magazine? I like your magazine. And I was like, well, I had this idea. And by the end of, I'd say, Tuesday night, I had like this amazing rough draft of what we were going to do. And by Thursday of that week, I was sending it to the factory in China, which is crazy. I mean, you just think about like that, that you have a thought and then somebody comes to you and goes, do you have any work for me? And you're kind of like, this is serendipitous. You know, this, this is meant to happen. It's a manifestation, I guess. Um, so without further ado, I would like to reveal that issue four, we will be giving away Sorry, I'm going to a souvenir pennant of the Mad Monsters from Ego. And it is a basically we're pretending like Mad Monster Castle is a, um, you know, a place in Niagara Falls or Lake George, New York. So it's got these, you know, these wonderful characters and, um, Honestly, the artwork is so amazing. It you know you can just tell that the artist loved these characters, and you know he just blew it out of the water. And um, you know, to be honest with you, this guy is so nice. He didn't even take a free one. He's like, no, I'm going to pay for it. And it's like, oh my God, you <laughs> like I owe you one, man. <laughs> you know. Um, so this is just like my favorite thing ever that we've done. Um, you know, we did the buttons for issue one and then the, the trading cards for issue two and the, the you know, the iron on, I thought was like, I'm not topping Tim Barron's iron on. And I still absolutely love that we did an iron on, but um, you know, I'm now worried about what we do for issue five because I just have no clue. Um <laughs> <laughs> this may be it. I don't know. Um, 
so yeah, I, I'm I'm just blown away by the generosity of people's time, and um, this is just so exciting to get stuff like this done. Um, and I do have. Um, have you thought about doing a full-on subscription? Good question. Yes. Um, what what it is is that you know you you do something like this and you're kind of worried. Like I don't really like taking people's money without having some sort of like, yeah, this is. Um, if you have a issue, idea for issue five premium, send it my way. Um, so. I wanted to get the first four issues under my belt, see how, uh, if I could get a distributor and we're now at that point where we've got a distributor and, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll feel a lot more confident for issue five to start an annual subscription service. And, um, especially because we figured out our shipping and logistics and we know what every issue costs and, you know, um, so it's starting to it's starting to grow. I mean, we're not at the point uh, where this is, you know, a profitable endeavor. But um, we knew that, you know, the 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 um, the business plan was sort of done to the fact that like you want to break even on the first two issues and then see where you're with three, and we're ahead of our goals. Uh, so to speak, like, you know, you project what you're going to do. And while we're, you know, we're not, um, we're, I'm not quitting my job. It, it's, we're in a good place. And um, I'm confident um, that we're going to keep going. And, um, you know, uh, Corey and I are planning out issue six right now as well. I had, you know, the, one of the things that I had to kind of like, uh, grow up about, I guess, because like the last, you know, the first three issues, we didn't have any sort of a deadline. And now with Diamond, you know, they demanded the cover for issue five uh, Thursday. And I didn't know what to do. And thank God uh, I have a friend in Robin Adams and uh, she really helped me out with that. Uh, so now I've got a you know, I've kind of, kind of put on the, the big boy pants, uh, so to speak, and um, come up with a, uh, an issue six right away. So um, we're batting around ideas. We're working on pieces, and um, I'm very excited. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's starting to feel very adult. I guess, um, which is okay. Maybe we're getting to be a real magazine, which is fantastic. Very sorry. Um, <laughs> when Miko Corp shows up, who is that at Miko Corp? Who's representing today? Um, yes, my first issue that I had problems with PayPal, I had problems with. Uh, Indiegogo, like everything went wrong. Oh God. And the shipping of issue one, um, all, you know, battle scars that, um, I knew it helped us get better. I changed shipping providers. I, um, refused to use, uh, another fundraising site. Um, and you know, PayPal and I are uh, not in a great place together. Um, but, you know, um, I get paid. I don't use their shipping service anymore. And um, it's okay. Um, fan letter page? Uh, that'd be okay. I don't... I really haven't gotten a lot of fan letters, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. You know, I mean, I think the, the the days of writing fan letters are sort of been replaced by nice comments on, you know, your Facebook wall. Um, one of the six part of the Migo Collective. Okay, so I have to guess. Um, uh, Dear Toy Ventures, yeah. Uh, Brian's Soapbox. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would publish people's submissions for sure. Um, issue four will also, uh, 
have a reveal in it. Uh, Jason Young, who publishes, oh boy, I hope I get this right, Blue Blue Ribbon Old Time Digest, did that great wax wrapper book. We're going to reveal the cover of his uh, Ben Cooper Halloween book, which he he tapped me to write the um, the forward to. It was awesome. I've never written a forward in my life, so and especially on that subject, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Um, so that that's another thing that's going on in that issue, and of course, we're continuing the Mall of Justice uh, series that eventually will spin off into a book. And if you're a Mego fan. Um, you're really going to want to see the photo in the back of Mall of Justice or you know, back of Toy Ventures issue four. It is, um, how do I put this? Mego collector porn. That's all I can say uh, without being gross. It's not actually, you know, porn, but, you know, you, if you're a fan of Mego collecting, you're going to be like, oh my God, this photo. Um, I'm very, very excited. Um, I just picked up the Arc 2 and Jason of Star Command. Oh, the what? The the videos? I love those shows. Um, those are like my my two well, two of my favorite Saturday morning programs ever. So um uh that's all I really had to say about the magazine, except you know, thank you all for your amazing support. Um the uh the uh, issue three's uh, response was fantastic. Uh, it keeps growing. And um, I was just so excited to see the response. And um, no one has posted a photo with their iron on. <laughs> Nobody at all. Um, and I would love to see them. I would absolutely love to see them. So um, if you guys do have iron on photos, please let me know. Um, I thought what I would do, what's this? Who was the uh, greatest, who here remembers Rocket Robin Hood? Well, I do. I'm a Toronto area kid. Um, and, and Hercules, Mighty Hercules. Absolutely. With Newton, Newton. Um, in fact, I have a custom Mego, uh, Rocket Robin Hood, uh, a friend of mine made for a, Toronto uh, toy show. I think he did uh, Hercules as well, but I missed out on that one. I don't know if I didn't go to that show, but you know, we, we were always kind of like doing these little premiums for Toronto area kids. And um, I made, that's how I made the, uh, the Igor from Frightenstein was for that show as well. Thanks David. That's really nice of you. And you're, you're a huge help dude, but you know that. Um, what I thought I would do is um, I have a um, – oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that um, – you reclaimed a um, a Remco creature. That's amazing. I'm, I'm so glad. That's one of my favorite figures. I have a knockoff box that um, I forgot about. Uh, it came, I think, in like February, and uh, I always want to do, um, uh, you know, videos so I don't open these. And then another box showed up, and I did a video on that with Jason a while back. And um, I thought it would—I forget what's in here, so I thought it would be kind of fun to do a live knockoff box opening. And uh, I, I have the Rocket Robin Hood song is awesome, Eric. Um, so you guys are, uh, if you want to, you can spend a Saturday night watching another man open his mail, uh, <laughs> which I've done a million times. Uh, but um, this one is um, especially weird because, like I said, I've been buying this. Uh, knockoff collection. It would be funny if I cut myself on the line. Um, I've been buying this knockoff collection for years now, and it's just sort of getting to the point where, yeah, this is what I have for you this month, and I just pay them. I, I do, it's not even really much of a conversation anymore. And um, 
this one, I cannot remember what's in here. Um, it was a blur. February or March was um, a weird month for me. And um, I was uh, going under a new medication. And my memory is actually kind of like fuzzy from that period. I would like leave my keys in my car and stuff. So, um, <laughs> okay. All right. So the first one. I think you guys, uh, if you do follow my series, it is another crime buster. And in this case, it is um, the Batman suit. It is the Captain Action Batman suit. It is the same uh, figure that kind of like knock off Joe. And uh, yeah, but it's, it's a Captain Action Batman suit. He's got the Captain Action boots, which were everywhere, but there, there was like a bajillion blow molded figures with Captain Action suits. They must have just had so many of these. This is the third Crime Buster I've gotten from um, from from this collection, and I'm wondering how many more there are. Like, I really hope there's like an Aquaman or you know, oh God, a Spider Man. Um, so that's funny. This guy's called, oh my God, Raiders to the Stars. And that is the Raiders um, logo. What does this say? Main of the Crown Corporation of Hong Kong. Let's see, like that's just cardstock back there. But it is a, um, God, I don't even know who this guy is, but I know what he's wearing, uh, which is a, um, a, uh, a Moonraker, the, the leftover Moonraker um, uh, outfits, and the, the, these actually I've seen these on a couple of different dolls before. The the Moonraker suit shows up a lot, and I don't think I think you know like a lot of these lines were kind of a disappointment, so there were leftovers in the factory. Um, the, the the header card's amazing. The doll itself is. Um, yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty low quality, <laughs> um, but that's amazing. I love this because um, anything with an old Mego outfit on is uh, yeah. He does kind of look like JFK. I've never seen that head before. Um, that's a new one to me. But that looks like a Fighting Yank body. It's just you know those Fighting Yank hands that were bendy, but that looks like it's they're in like hard plastic, which is really weird. Um, so yeah, I, I that's just bizarre. Raiders of the Stars. That's cool. That kind of looks like a cover of an album I have um, by a band called Failure. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Come on. So this is a crazy creep. And um <sighs> Ben Casey, yeah, this does kind of look like the Ben Casey doll. Oh, you're right. Wow, that's old. Um Crazy Creeps are this weird series of monster dolls that look like they're closeouts, and they all have nooses, weird nooses. And okay, I do remember him sending me this photo because it was like this was the thing. Not that I've ever refused him on any of this stuff, but um, this was the one where it was like, yeah, okay, like that. That alone makes me want the whole box. And um, it's it's a wolf man in what looks like like a brick man tooth shirt and um it's um yeah that's like the like the soma wolf man i don't know what he's wearing but this is like my fourth crazy creep from him and um it's just so funny oh my god no wonder i wanted this and again this just looks like they the factory put whatever clothes they could on. It's a Western shirt. Is that where it's from? Okay. 
I'd never seen it before. Um, and yeah, he's he's a, another one of these weird, crazy creeps. And I forget, somebody actually said they remembered seeing these in like a pound shop. And um, yeah, yeah, there's like little Western ropes on this. Just bizarre, just just weird and run stuff. Um, I love it. This is great. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. I um, <laughs> I had honestly forgotten what was in that box. So, <laughs> um, I, you know, didn't have a great agenda for this episode. Um, if you guys had any questions you wanted to field about the channel going forward, um, you know, obviously we're going to continue to do videos. Jason and I have um, that Crazy Creeps uh, is the album cover from the Disney Haunted House record. In fact, um, whoever did it didn't even take out the new probably just like thinking um, it would be fine. Uh, have you ever considered changing the name of the channel from Brick Mansfield to Toy Ventures because of branding, I guess? Um, no, but that's a good idea. Um, I really don't uh, completely understand, like because I do stuff for the Mega Museum and I do things for Pod Stallions, and of course Jason and I have Pod Stallions, I, I chose the Brick Man Tooth. Well, actually, I just chose the Brick Man Tooth name years ago, but I always thought it was kind of more of a hub. These are these are retro. These are like older um, uh, older figures. Um, so yeah, um, and I also don't completely understand YouTube channels. To be perfectly honest with you, um, I you know kind of stumbled backwards into this and. Uh, people keep showing up, and that's that's wonderful. And I've made some friends, um, but you know, it was always it was always a way of just kind of like if I ever sold my collection or moved on in my life, I wanted to kind of like pay tribute to all this stuff and tell the stories. And um, it's just been kind of uh, fun, you know. Um, and yes, there there was a guy, the Brick Man Tooth. Uh, character was a name I created based on two things. And one of them was Randy Mantooth from um, Emergency. And the brick uh, came from my one of my favorite movies, Doc Savage. Um, if you guys have ever seen it, at one point, Pamela Hensley, um, uh, Princess Ardala, actually, I think, um, throws herself at, at Doc Savage and he tells her he can't be with a woman because she's, you know, she could be in danger. And she goes, I understand. And he, he goes, Mona, you're a brick. And it's one of my favorite, um, uh, one of my favorite lines in a movie ever. It's so stupid. And so that's where Brick Mantooth came from. Yeah, and yes, Anchorman, Anchorman definitely played into it as well. I was a humongous fan of Anchorman, but um, that was kind of you know I, I know there's a character named Brick Tamblin, and, and and I guess Wes Mantooth, but we were both kind of taken from the same sources there. You need to watch that Doc Savage movie. I agree. Um, well, what I was going to say with the channel is I'm going to be continuing making videos. I you know with the magazine. I may not make as many, but Jason and I are doubling down on podcasts. We want to do two podcasts a month and kind of expand the Pod Stallions universe. That's really grown. And we've gotten this group together, the Pod Stallions Facebook group, which honestly um, kept me on the internet um, for a long time. Um, and, and I would like to do a live with Jason. Uh, in the near future for a long time, you know, it, like last year I was kind of in a, a crummy place and I was just considering packing it in. And then the one thing that kept me going was the pod stallions group was just so fun. Um, you know, I looked forward to going on there every day and, and, uh, 
um, shooting the crap, so to speak. And, you know, where we would talk about things like the Doc Savage movie and have fun. And we have things like, uh, even though I don't, I just kind of watch some of the things. There's like a yacht rock thing every weekend that put, Keith puts on. And I don't know, it's it just, it's, it's a nice vibe. And it kind of made me realize that you can make your own, you know, decent space. And, you know, especially after the year we've had, um, I think that's really important, uh, you know, uh, to make your own, make your own joy. And um, we get so much positive feedback from the show, you know, people saying, oh, I feel like I'm there and I want to talk at you guys that we want to keep it going. And I know Jason is especially um, motivated and incensed to keep going. He's, um, He's really on fire and uh, I'm all for it. I, you know, I absolutely love doing it. And, um, you know, um, it's all about having fun and, and making something. And um, in between this, um, this magazine and the YouTube videos and the wonderful response I get from you guys and the podcasts, we're, we're just having fun. Um, and I'd rather do this than um, watch TV, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. So, you know, um, thank you all so much. I love the pod style. It's probably it's very entertaining. Yeah, I've heard that a lot and about talking back at the podcast. And um, the, 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 the genesis of the show was Jason and I were in a car together. Jason and I have met once. And we, Jason flew down to Toronto and spent uh, a day with me. And we were trying to figure out Podstones. It was about a week before we launched the podcast. And um, we were talking, we went to Hamilton, Ontario together, and we went to a couple of toy stores. And um, we did this whole like hour and a half conversation. And he said, so what is the podcast? And I go, I think the podcast is this, you and I on a car ride. And, you know, the listener is in the back seat. And um, that is our formula. And I think it really works. And I hear so many people saying, you know, oh, I wanted to tell you, you guys couldn't remember the name of something. And I just yelled it out. And it's like, yeah, because you're in the back seat. That's, that's the plan. That's the whole thing. Yeah, no, it's a common thing for people to say that to me. I hear it all the time. And I, I occasionally... I uh, get texts from friends, you know, going, oh, my God, I wanted you to um, I wanted you to <laughs> to know that answer. Uh, if Brick Mantooth had a signature car, it'd be the Grand Torino from Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, that's probably a good one. I mean, that, that was a very popular car. Um, I'm not a car guy or else I'd come up with something. But uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I'm really glad that the pod stallions group is working for you, Roger. It, it certainly is for me. In fact, um, that's how I get on Facebook in the morning. I, I sometimes I'm not the super chattiest, but um, I'm a very easily distracted human being. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I'm an adult ADHD sufferer and I have, you know, 1100 tabs going and uh, sometimes I forget where I'm even going, but I do read a lot of that stuff and I just love um, some of the context in there. And it's, uh, it's a fabulous group and I, I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, a lot of people praise me for it, but um, I have to do anything and that's the beauty of it. I don't really have to, um, I don't have to regulate it. It's great. You guys are just self-regulating, which is amazing. So um I'm really excited that there's this many people watching, by the way. I really want to thank you all. Um, and may I ask what the poster is behind you? Yes, I will show you. Um, this is one of my favorite posters of all. This is, by the way, the cover of Toy Ventures issue one. Um, oh, I can't get it there. Sorry. Um, it is called um, Frankenstein's Kung Fu Monster. And what it is, is a, I think it's on YouTube or Vimeo, one of those pirate, uh, yeah, sorry about the Blair Witch, um, one of those pirate sites where it is basically a whole bunch of Kamen Rider episodes, Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider episodes that um, 
have been like put into a movie and it was sold in like Europe. And uh, there's no kung fu monster in the film. There's, but I just I'm a huge um, movie guy, and I love exploitation. And um, to have a, a a common rider movie poster, it was just like yeah, no, I got, and I, I like Frankenstein a lot too. Yeah, Frankenstein's kung fu monster. I found it on eBay, um, and it was one of those things where you know how you like see something and then you go, how did I know this wasn't like, I needed to own it. And um, I bought it just as we moved into this house. And I think it's the first thing I put on the wall. Cause it was like, yes, I, um, I needed to have that. And yes, I, I'm a huge Kung Fu uh, movie buff. I love Kung Fu movies. So that that's, that's also huge. Um, yeah. Europeans do get the rack toys. movies. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um how do you pick the intro for pod stallions i really like that intro theme song um that is a song um i can't remember the name of it now um where it comes from actually is this um oh, i got the vhs here um yeah here it is it's the dvd um when I was a kid, somebody put um, all the Jerry Anderson or a couple four episodes of the Jerry Anderson um, UFO series into this uh, incomprehensible TV movie called Invasion UFO. And I saw that when I was like 10 or 12. Uh, I can't quite remember. And it, it had a huge impact on me. Like I just I, I became a lifelong fan of UFO. And it had that music in it. Uh, by Francis Monkman. It's called Dawn of an Era. And it is stock music. It is, um, they used it in Timex commercials and other things. And um, yeah, it, it, you know, it haunted me for years. And when we started doing a podcast, like that's my podcast name. And I, by the way, I get dinged by YouTube every time I play that as a copyright thing strike. Um, but I don't care. Uh, you know, I hope Francis Monkman, if he's still alive, is getting every penny of monetization from me. Um, we are doing, I got a question about Rack Toys. Yes, the Timex commercial, that's right. Um, the, um, the, of Curved Air? I don't know what Curved Air is. Rack Toys is coming back. Um, and um, that's going to be... Uh, through uh nacelle company who does the toys that made us <clears throat> i think the whole thing has been slowed down by covid they are launching it with a series of books and i, I believe um my pal mark balomo is in there and there's another couple of books um I'm, I'm still on board i'm still excited to be a part of that um but i don't know when it's happening and i hope it's happening soon i mean i could use the money um you got copyright over movie sound effects? Well, that's crazy. Uh, you got copyright over your own music? <laughs> um, if there is Amigo Me again, and that will happen in 2022, I would very much like to do a Pod Stallions meetup. I think that would make it even more appealing to me. Um, and I'll let you guys know when that's happening uh, because the Pod Stallions community has grown up. Hi, Chad. Um, or just one video twice. Oh, just one video. Okay. But, um, I got copyrighted over copywriting. That's funny. I used to write copy for catalogs. Um, I would really like to do that as well. I think that would be really fun. Um, yeah, I wanted that Johnny Blaze. Ghost Rider Rack Toy as a kid, too. In fact, I have a really funny memory of describing that to my father in the backseat of the car. Like, listen to this toy description. And well, this, he got two heads. And, you know, in my head, it was like Amigo doll. And, and he goes, I said to my dad, what do you think that sounds like? And he said, that sounds like a piece of crap. And uh, years later, when I saw it at a toy show, I realized, oh, my dad's right. It is a piece of crap. Because, <laughs> like I said, I thought it was a, uh, an actual... Um, 
Migo doll. You know, I thought everything in the Heroes World catalog was Migo dolls. Um, oh my God, a Rick, Richard Petty rack toy and he's smoking on the front. That's funny. Sorry, I, I, I was zoning out there reading comments. <laughs> um, so I think that might be it for this evening, unless anybody else had uh, any more questions uh, about the the magazine or the the show or, or anything like that. Let me know. Um, I am. Uh, oh my God! Toei took down their own channel with copyright strikes. That is the funniest thing I've read tonight. <laughs> Um, great. Um, <laughs> how about a 24 hour network? Um, I would have to throw in like reruns of, of, uh, Sergeant Bilko and other stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, my advice for people wanting to get Mego Batman, like the new Mego Batman, um, who is the woman in the silver bodysuit? That is Lieutenant uh, Gay Ellis from UFO, uh, the silver purple-haired moon girls. I um, have a childhood crush on them. And uh, yes, I have a... Actually, I bought that by accident, that statue. And I just, you know, I kept it. But uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of the characters from UFO. And I buy them in any figural form. I actually have another um, doll of her right here uh product enterprises put it out a few years ago it has a um oh she is dusty um and that doesn't work anymore this used to actually speak and say the lines from the show no i really did buy that statue by accident i didn't i was thought i was bidding on a model kit Like all the candy that falls into my shopping cart. Okay, like I wasn't, it was a happy accident. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, it's just, there's very few, um, how do I get a KO Crime Buster? I, you know what, I've only gotten these from the one guy and he seemed to have bought them like back in the 80s. So uh, I hope more show up. Thank you very much. I, I'm glad you thought so. Um, this wasn't as distracting as I thought it would be. They did do a policewoman and they did the SWAT characters. LJN did the SWAT characters. Uh, Horseman did the policewoman figure. Uh, it is um, actually not Angie Dickinson, though. It's a character called Havoc. We're going to be doing something on uh, Havoc in an upcoming issue of Toy Ventures. Actually, we're talking about that. Um, oh, you missed the Toy Ventures 4 Premium? Well, I'll show it to you again. Where is it? Um, I do like the Product Enterprises made some cool Doctor Who stuff. You're absolutely right. This is the Toy Ventures 4 Premium. It is a Mad Monsters Castle pennant. It is a souvenir. Um, we will be we have we will be able to cover anyone who orders from us on this. Like I said, it won't be available through Diamond or Amazon, but we have it through our website. I would love a Bruce Dickinson action figure. <laughs> yeah, I um, the LEDs in my office are done because I wanted my office to be like a fantasy land. Like, you know, like I'm working in a TARDIS. I, you know, I know that sounds strange for a grown man to say, but your environment should be your environment. Um, yes, Havoc has really nice outfits. You're right. I don't think I get the Bruce Di Dickinson diaper joke. I'm not that deep with Iron Maiden. The Mego Enterprise playset was reprinted by Diamond Select Toys about 10 years ago. Yes. How did the movie go packing everything? Oh, the move? Oh, it was horrible. Just absolutely horrible. Uh, we got, we were made homeless. It was, 
just unbelievably bad. Um, I'm still missing things. Uh, dah, don't move. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had my toy collection in a storage unit for almost 10 months. And um, it was just so unpleasant. And what's really weird is that my office back at the old place was much smaller. And it was all perfectly all on display. And I moved into this bigger space. And I mean, I built this space. And we cut the basement in half. Uh, we built a wall. I put a fun new door up. Uh, and it should work on paper. And yet I never have gotten it to the point where I was... Um, I'm happy with it. Um, it's just one of those things that kind of drives me crazy. I will look at pictures of my old room and go, how did I do this? And it's not like I, um, I bought um, a ton of stuff in between. It's really just strange. Um, I hope you do this more off. Thank you. I think I will. Um, I do not collect comic books. Uh, that's, I collect records, I collect movies, I collect toys, um, I collect books, but comics and I broke up in the 90s. Uh, the only comics I buy are Gold Key Star Treks, weird, you know, terrible superheroes like Mighty Crusaders and Dell superheroes, and um, Spire Christian comics. I, my daughter and I both are obsessed with Spire Christian comics, um, but I don't. I don't buy comic books. I I fell out of, other than like, you know, I, I love Peter Bagg's hate and stuff like that, but I fell in love with superhero comics at some point in my life and I never got it back. Um, am I more of a sci-fi guy or fantasy? Definitely sci-fi and horror. I do not like anything involving magic. Uh, I never was a big fan of that. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I like a few, like I like movies like Your and stuff, but um, it was a really hard sell to get me into Game of Thrones. I actually did like that. Um, yeah, th those co those comics are amazing. Yeah, I buy those spires whenever I see them. Um, please be on my podcast. Yeah, sure. Just drop me a line. I, I've got to contact us through the website. I'll be on your podcast. Sure. Flash Gordon comic. Which one is that? Um, the, the movie one? Cause that thing's amazing. Am I a religious person? I am a person of some faith, uh, but I keep it to myself. Uh, yeah. I just quit buying new comics. Um, yeah, and by the way, those Spire comics, some of them are just so wonderfully earnest. I don't I don't hate them. I'm just fascinated by them. Um, like it's not it's not mockery. It's just sort of like I can't believe that this stuff exists. Um, I got kicked out of my only um, D and D game. I couldn't rationalize role play, and the um, the dude doing it was a bit of a dick like he was a control freak so i started just being kind of a jerk and uh i you know i definitely deserved to get kicked out of uh, <laughs> that dnd game but i never just went back to it um what was the other thing dnd or um i can't remember what the other question was oh lord of the rings i liked the movies but i never read the books without a face um, yeah the new 52 I never got into that um, that's one of the things that got me out of modern comics was um, the the storytelling seemed to be stretching everything out to a, a trade and while I understood the business of it some of this stuff just felt like you could have just told this story in one issue or two issues um, and then I would I was really turned off um, by like all the buzz around stuff like Hush. I remember like reading the Hush trade and going like, that's it. Um, and um, I can't remember the, 
there was some Justice League story, and it involved um, it involved some adult themes, and you know, um, some things are written maturely, and then some things are just exploitation. And I just kind of felt like this was trying to be a big boy comic by you know showing this stuff, but it really it really was kind of immature in its uh, context. And it just turned me off. I, I think I just, you know, I just kind of changed. I can't remember the, the story. Um, I think it was something like Identity Crisis, uh, which ironically is the song that's the Toy Ventures theme. But um, oh, I'm sorry to hear about the childhood comic collection and the busted water here to tank. That's everyone's nightmare. Water is horrible. And I, I had a flood just before I moved and lost... Um, a ton of stuff. It was just so sad. The one thing that I was really worried about is like we were moving and everything was in the garage and the garage flooded. And um, the um, <clears throat> I have this Axon Jackson uh, box that Migo made, never made. And um, it just, it destroyed the frame it was in, but the, the box was fine. And it was like, good. Cause that, Thing cost me a fortune. I, I would have just cried, but I lost posters and and, and magazines and comics and that sort of thing. So um, everything now in here or uh, in the house is on a shelf. Um, my toy collection is all like these are old Hallmark displays that I got from a Hallmark store going out of business, and there's about a foot of. Uh, a foot of stand to them. So if there was a flood in here, everything would be above. And um, oh, I have so many collecting regrets. You have no idea. Um, the the worst thing I ever did, the one that haunts me to this day is I had a, a I went to a toy show and this guy had the boxed uh, talking Mego Spider-Man, the stuffed one that I got when I was five, and I, it still had the insert in the box. And you know, I think I think I gave him fifty bucks, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And this dude came up to me, and you know, he just kept going, "Give me five, I'll give you six and you know, American. And uh, I was young, and I wanted that money to go to a convention, and my wife or I think it was just my girlfriend at the time. She goes, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I did it. And uh, turns out that that dude had ripped me off uh, through toy shop. Like she read his tag and I wish she had said, look at his name tag. Uh, Cause I would have walked away. And um, so I had the money and I, you know, I made good money and it paid for a vacation that we took, but um it just, and I don't think it would have haunted me if it wasn't that that, that was that dude. Um, you know, I, I probably would be like, oh, darn, I wish I hadn't sold that thing. Uh, but, um, and I ended up um, paying $600 for another one of those. Not as nice. Um, oh, yeah, the, the Amigo Aquaman versus the Shark at Chiller. At least that went to a good friend. Uh, that went to Lenny Lee, my buddy, you know, Lee's action figure news. So like the, it's, it's easier to take when a good deal goes into someone you likes hands, you know, 12 inch Christopher Reeve, Superman, $6 million man, millennium Falcon. Those are all uh, Christmas memories for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you, you feel the, the whole point of that Spider-Man story, I think is the fact that, the bad guy won. Like that guy owed me money, and um, and and he had screwed me on something for my girlfriend, so um, I wasn't super happy about that. But uh, it's in the past, and you know I, I haven't actually run into that guy in twenty years. So um, that's one of these things I could do for hours is tell collecting stories because um, I've been collecting since I was about 14 or 15. I started going to um, friends, yard sales of kids I grew up with 
and um, which was dicey. Like there's a Shogun Warrior back here, like a Mazinga that I bought off my best friend from grade school. Um, why have the Remco mini monsters from 1980 have suddenly inflated? I don't know. That's crazy. Um, I collected those like 10 years ago and they were like, you could buy every one carded for under a hundred dollars. And um, I, I started collecting in around 1984, 85. Uh, I don't know why those, those have gone up so much, but they have just exploded. I don't know. Um, I mean, they're 80s toys and 80s toys are hot. They're three and three quarter inch. Um, uh, I don't know. Um, we are doing something for Toy Ventures with those. And it's something very special because we um, we know the guy who uh, managed that line. And he is um, an amazing wealth of information. And he uh, knows everything about that. I love the Crestwood monster books. They are the reason that Toy Ventures has so much monster content. They were absolutely made me unemployable. <laughs> oh yeah, I could see that the Super Seven line. She did. My wife did name Toy Ventures, so my wife is amazing and uh, a very incredibly patient woman, and also like. Um, a huge fan of antique malls and flea markets. Like we're both uh, vintage souls. She she collects um, Halloween and Christmas stuff. Yeah, I've heard about all the sports and Pokemon cards. That's scary. Um, I don't. Um, do I have any interest in modern toys? Almost none. Um, I like. Uh, some stuff by Amigo. I like some stuff from Figures Toy Company and NECA makes the odd thing that I really can't live without like Richard Simmons. But um, I, you know, I was collecting vintage toys when, well, no, that's not necessarily true. Like I did have G.I. Joe Real American Hero as a kid and I liked um, 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 uh, He-Man. I had the first wave of He-Man, but that was like more towards the end of my time. So that, that seems to be what modern toy collecting is. It's like He-Man and Star Wars and, and, and Real American Hero. And I have very fond memories of that, but I, I don't have the, uh, the connection. Like I'm more predilected with um, mid seventies to late seventies. Those are like really happy times for me. And um, so I have no, um, umbrage against that but i don't i only go to toys r us to buy um like marvel legends for friends or if my son wants to go pick up star wars black series because he's he's a collector of like clone troopers and that sort of thing um, um is there a toy from my childhood that i wish i had now i'm done <laughs> i'm good I, i've got everything i want um I can't think of a single thing. I would love to have um, my childhood stuff back. I would love to have, you know, my bullet man back or my big gym. Um, they're gone. Um, but no, I, I'm, I've, I've relived everything I needed and more. Um, I'm very, very um, uh, content. Yeah, I, I have the I have the your Blu-ray as well. Is there a Grail toy that you just have to have but haven't had the opportunity to pick up? Um, yeah, I mean, I would really like to get my hands on a, a carded Mister Rock from Lincoln International. Uh, but as I, you know, as I get older, uh, and I have two people in college, uh, it's probably not going to happen. And you start to, to have those expectations where you're like, well, maybe that's not going to happen. Um, and that's okay. I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, it is what it is. Um, I'd be very, you know, I mean, if I could stumble onto one, I'd buy it, but 
the idea of um, you know putting the kind of money that that thing goes for. I think that goes for a few thousand bucks now if you can find one, and uh, it's probably not going to happen. Um, you know, I would I would also love to have a whole collection of like stretch dolls, but um, Mr. Rock is a knockoff of Mr. Spock by Lincoln International, and it's it's absolutely silly. Look it up. Um, and it goes for, um, you could probably <laughs> buy a hundred Mr. Spock dolls in the card for what Mr. Rock goes for. So I guess he's the winner. Um, you know, th there's a whole bunch of stuff I'd love to get into, um, but time, money, and, um, you know, realization, like how much of this can I, can I buy? Um, and I've just started to become, um, what are your thoughts on Hasbro relaunching a 12 inch GI Joe line? Um, like, like, uh, like, like if they did like, like they've done it a couple of times. Um, I'd be curious to see it. I'm, I've, I'm kind of like good with GI Joe. I have a ton of GI Joes and, um, They'd have to do something like, like the, somebody's doing the the redoing the the Falcon stuff from Brazil, and I'm probably going to buy the latest one because it's a figure I don't have. It's like kind of like it's like GI Joe in space, sort of like a 12 inch version of Super Joe, and they're reissuing that stuff in Brazil, and I'd be very interested in that stuff. Um, but a modern 12 inch GI Joe, no, I. I probably wouldn't be into it. I, I didn't buy any of the stuff they came out with like 20 years ago. Um, what's a country you would love to visit? Japan. Yeah, Tokyo. I would also like very much to go to England. I've been to England once, but that was just like I was in the airport. So I've never really, like I've been to a airport gift shop in England. Um, but uh, very little pallet toys, toys in there. Um but yeah, I, my number one place to go in this world is, is Tokyo. Oh, thank you very much, Mark. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm going to tell Jason that. Yes, Hasbro did 12-inch Joes in the 90s and the early 2000s. And uh, they were pretty cool. Um, they reproduced a lot of uh, classic sets and did some new themes. And I liked them, but I didn't need to own them. Uh, slaughtered lamb. Yeah, I'd love to go there too. Why was Action Man never in North America? Because it was a license from England. Oh, well, the Action Man did make it into North America in the 2000s. Will you sell me a Gotcha Man helmet? I do not have a spare one to sell. I'm sorry. I've, yeah, I would love to go to an English toy store. I would love to go to an English toy show. Um, I love, there's a couple of good YouTube channels of like uh, Lester vintage toys and time tunnel toys. And I, I, I you know, we're, we're locked down here. So I love looking at toy shows and toy stores. And um, I just kind of watch YouTube videos of that. Um, like I said, I'm a vintage guy at heart. I don't have, um, like somebody I know was talking about a YouTube channel and it's like a huge toy channel. And I had never heard of it because the guy talks about like has lab stuff. And I don't, I don't know what that is. I haven't been to Los Angeles um, for a long time, but I have been to some vintage stores. They're probably all closed by now. Uh, I really liked Los Angeles very much. And I would like to get back up there because uh, Jason, have I ever hear of a toy show? Yes, the Toy Hunter. Funny story. Uh, I was supposed to be on Toy Hunter. The crew flew to Toronto. Uh, Jordan had not flown to Toronto, but Mark had. Mark was that, you know, Mark Huckabone, my friend. And the show got canceled while they were in Toronto. Um, so my segment of Toy Hunter never aired. Um, Mark and I got very drunk. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, but we were supposed to do a piece on Aquaman versus the great white shark. And the conceit of it was that they were disagreeing on a price for it. So they both flew to Toronto and got me to be the judge of it. Um, 
which never happened. Um, I was also involved in an episode. Yeah, there's your Robbie. <laughs> uh, I was also involved in an episode, the Halloween episode. Um, I provided the toy that Kirk Hammett bought, which was the AHI Jiggler Mummy. Um, but they didn't like what happened was Mark called me and said, do you have something Kurt Kamet doesn't own? And I said, yeah, I do. Um, but they refilmed that with Jordan and another dude. Um, and um, it was, um, it was actually pretty funny. Like I, I, I remember going like um, being upset at my recasting, like texting Mark and going, oh, come on, you know, <laughs> that guy is not me. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it was kind of funny because nobody filmed me and Mark talking, but we're the ones who did that that behind the scenes stuff. So I've heard of Troy Hunter, um, and I you know I I'm casually friendly with Jordan. He seems like a nice guy. Rob Turner can't figure out how to change my name. Hi, Rob. Good to see you, buddy. It is that's my Buck Rogers collection back there. Um, I I adore Amigo Buck Rogers. Yeah, we're going to do more of what we're reading and talking about in the near future, um, especially because, like, I pick up stuff. I should be one of the Pawn Stars. Well, I don't live in lots of... Do they still make Pawn Stars? Is that filmed in Las Vegas? I've, I've always wanted to be a talking head in a documentary. <laughs> Big dreams. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. The, the 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 Migo line was something my mom denied me as a kid, and um, it didn't. Um, it didn't. Uh, yeah, the, um, the Migo line was um, because I'd gotten into Battlestar Galactica, which I didn't actually play with. My mom was like, "You're not getting into Buck Rogers," and it was a shame because I actually liked uh, Buck Rogers. Um, so now I have everything. Um, the Toys That Made Us is actually my publisher, so maybe I will be on it. Um, they're the people publishing Rack Toys, and I'm, I'm friendly with them. I like them, so I'd be very welcome to, to being on an episode. Um, am I looking for any vintage Japanese toys? There's one that I've always looking for. As, um, I've always wanted the Henshin Cyborg Ultraman set, and for some reason I could never find one, you know? Uh, the the C action figures after Matt Mason those are called Sea Devils and they're amazing. Um, oh yeah, no. Um, it's funny the stuff your mom denies you that that uh, that haunts you. Yeah, um, I could never be on American Pickers. I would want to keep everything as well. Yes, they did show pictures of my collection of the toys that made us. And that was really nice. I think I'm in the Star Trek episode and the Joe episode. And one of the nicest things about the Joe episode is I actually got an email from a guy from Brazil uh, because I have two Brazilian G.I. Joes, the Condor and Torak. And he wrote me thanking me for promoting uh, Brazilian culture, which I thought was really nice. Like I did, you know, I didn't intentionally do it. I just sent a photo of my Joe collection and, um, that was kind of a really nice thing to get. Um, any cool Space 1999 stuff I have? Um, I do think an updated version of Space 1999 can work, but you'd have to really um, mess with the, the, the storyline. The coolest Space 1999 thing I own, and pardon me. Um, oh, where is it? Crap. Um, I'm sorry, I'll have to showcase it later. I have the original uh, pre-production head sculpt for Commander Koenig. Um, I got it in a lot from Mattel, a Mattel sculptor. And um, it, uh, it, is probably, um, it is probably the coolest Space 1999 thing I own. Um, are you a fan of Voyage to Bottom of Sea? Yeah, I, I like it. I, I like all the Irwin Allen stuff. Um, I, I, I think the sea view is really cool. I love the design of the flying sub. Sunshine family, scary. Thank you very much, Anthony. I'm glad you liked them. Um, 
Was that a Lee Hufuk shirt? Yes, it is. Thank you. Good eye. Um, any Turkish Star Wars stuff? No, I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy. I like Star Wars. I, um, but I don't, you know, I, I choose to go for uh, stuff around. Like I'm more of a Planet of the Apes guy than I'm a Star Wars guy. Um, the stun gun from Space 1999, I agree, is, is an awesome design. Yeah, Remco did the uh, ship for the voyage. I had my chance to buy it a couple of times at a flea market, and I passed. The, the vehicles in Irwin Allen shows are iconic and amazing. I love the spin drift, and I think the time tunnel looks amazing. Uh, every their design is is undeniably cool. There's a really cool time tunnel model kit from Japan. I wish I could buy. Yeah, that's um, that poster is from uh, Corey Lachat, who co-designs and edits every issue of Toy Ventures, and that cover inspired Toy Ventures. Um, this this picture that that was I knew that would be the cover. Thanks very much, Keith. Um, thank you very much, everybody, for showing up. I am probably going to have to wrap it up. Any Thunderbird stuff in your collection? Not a Thunderbirds fan. Um, I think the ships look neat, but uh, the show never um, the show never really grew on me. But the ships are amazing. Anyway, uh, wait. I'm just gonna. The Mattel Eagle is amazing. Yeah, um, showing more of my room. It's the setup that I, I don't know how to do, but I, maybe I'll get that. Like I said, I'm a technical Luddite. Um, maybe I'll set it up differently. I'll put the camera over there. Uh, but I, you know, I want to be able to read the comments. Um, and I will uh, launch this as a replay, but thank you everyone. This is amazing. Um, I can't believe how positive this has been. And, um, you know, like I said, this was a huge, um, leap of faith for me and um well th this has been very validating and thank you very much um I'm, I'm really excited and um lots more to come and um really appreciate this so um i look forward to talking to all of you in uh in the comments and the facebook group and uh thanks thanks very much so um i'm going to crack a drink and um Say cheers to you folks. Thank you so much. This was an honor and uh, I really appreciate it. This has been, it's just been great. I'm going to, I'm going to sleep like a baby tonight. Thanks guys. Um, this is wonderful. Cheers. <laughs>